This is Haystack Health Radio on KLZ 560. Haystack Health Radio is powered by HaystackHelp.com. Finding help can be like finding a needle in a haystack. But with HaystackHelp.com, finding the needle just got easier. Now, Haystack Health Radio with Scott Watley on KLZ 560. Good afternoon and welcome to Haystack Help Radio. Thank you so much for joining us today. Check out our website, haystackhelp.com. There you'll find a lot of great companies to do business with and businesses that we have checked out as well. Today is a special edition of Your Money Matters, brought to you by our good friends at Affordable Interest Mortgage. Mr. Kurt Rogers is with us in studio. Their number is 720-895-0500, and they can help you with all of your mortgage needs. Kurt, how are you, sir? I am doing just fine. How are you? And this good. almost the first month is gone for 2018. <laughs> I said this the other day. I was with a client, but it seems like New Year's Day. Happy New Year to everyone. It's like five months ago. Yeah, it's gone. <laughs> Especially with the flu and, and the weather that we've yeah. had and the things that have gone on, it's like we've, we're already three, four months into the year, and know. it's only 30 days, but yeah. here we go. Absolutely. Well, again, Affordable Interest Mortgage, your one-stop shop for all your mortgage needs. So, Kurt, any updates in the mortgage world we want to talk about? Well, the thing that most people don't want to hear, rates are going up. Okay. You know, the, it, it's you hear when the feds are saying they're going to raise the rates, but nobody talks about it when the rates are getting raised. Without the feds, right. and rates over the last week have slowly inched up. Um, I'm hoping they'll come back down, but you know the economy's too strong, and I think they're pretty much going to stay where they are. I mentioned at the end of last year that rates will probably be closer to four and a half to four seven five by the end of the year, and that's probably pretty close to true because they're heading in that direction pretty well. Um, there's a lot of people out there trying to figure out: Do I want to go out and buy a house? Because with the rates up, it starts to affect. Mm-hmm. What they qualify for, um, I've talked about how the feds have raised the loan limits, so it makes it easier. Um, but what I'm seeing a lot of people do is refinance their home because of their equity and upgrade their home. There's certain things they can upgrade and, okay. and actually add value. A kitchen gives you 80 to 90% sure. per dollar. Uh, mm-hmm. Bathrooms give you, actually, if you do the bathroom right, you can get 100% back of the money you invested mm-hmm. in value on the home. Right. So those kind of things are working pretty well. Good deal. Their website, AIMortgage.net. And again, their number, 720-895-0500. So, Kurt, tell us about our guest today. My guest is actually, he's my CPA. Um, I've had him for quite a while. And with the new tax laws, I thought it would be good to bring him on so that people could call in and ask certain questions because, you know, you hear this side say this about the tax bill. You hear people on that side say mm-hmm. this. What does it really work for the average person? Um some of the things I don't like about it, some of the things he doesn't like about it, you don't like, but is it good for everybody? So I thought I would bring him on the show. His name is Michael Crouch. He's my CPA, works right across the hall, so it makes it real simple when I want to go see him. Oh, okay, right there in your building. <laughs> right, right across good the hall. Deal. Well, he can't run, can he, Michael? <laughs> yeah, uh-uh. sometimes too simple. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, give us a little background on yourself, how you got into this, where you're from, and all that. Um, actually, for me, it started, I was a junior in high school, and the only class that made sense was accounting. Ugh. So <laughs> I'm one guys. of those few. Hated those guys, yeah. <laughs> and then from there, I, uh, I grew up in Loveland and went to Colorado State, and then uh, moved to Denver about 1990. Okay. So Colorado native. Good deal. So when we talk about a CPA, um, first of all, should everyone pretty much have a CPA That's a tough question. A lot of people would benefit from one, mm-hmm. um, and there's there's different levels of tax preparer and CPA. And right, um, not all CPAs do taxes, and uh, not all tax preparers are CPAs. But um, there's enough in the law that it, it probably makes sense to it, at least entertain. Right, because I mean you're you're up to speed, hopefully. On right. all the different things that are going on, and I, I mean, I don't think there's any way Kurt and I could be up to date on everything. Well, it's we a good thing they know. didn't give these things to him starting in, at the end of February through March and April for him to learn the new law. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I mean, that's the busy time for him. So <laughs> they gave it to him in, like in December, so he's had 30 days to work on it. Wow. All right. And not much in this law is effective for 2017. Some depreciation mm-hmm. issues, but most of this we're all going to see next tax season. Gotcha. So. Tell us from your standpoint, we were talking a little before the show, you kind of work by referral only, but, mm-hmm. you know, if people are going to, I think, you know, get a mortgage, they should go down and sit with Kurt, see if, mm. see what that relationship's like. 
Same thing with a CPA when you're hiring a CPA. Should you go and interview a couple to see who's a good fit? I think it's always beneficial. And the best place to find a CPA is to check with coworkers and uh, people you hang out with, different uh, clubs or maybe your uh, church or different different organizations. But uh, to refer somebody who works really well with somebody is always a good place to start to look for a CPA. Absolutely. Yeah, I, I've known Michael for a while. Diana found him, went across the hall, and she connected right well with him because the CPI had had an S, and, and, and he's no longer with us. So I was kind of wow. in a rush to find a CPA. He just happened to be across the hall. And working with Michael was easy because I, I bother him a lot. I tell him I need to, to bring money over because I'll walk across the hall and ask a quick question, and he'll stop whatever he's doing to answer the question, and I know he's looking at me going, I wish that guy could do that, but I, I keep bothering him all the time. So, um, Michael's a great CPA, and I agree with him. Having uh, a CPA to answer your questions, just so you know the right way to go, even with the tax laws, mm-hmm. because maybe you're missing something that could help you. Right. And we're going to go over some of those now. Because a mistake can be costly either way, either to your benefit of not being able to take a deduction, or if you make a mistake the wrong way, come back when they add the penalties and all the different things, could be very costly. Exactly. Exactly. All right. So let's get into when does it start getting busy for you? I mean, what should people be doing now to get their taxes ready for April 15th? Well, most tax documents should be uh, mailed out by tomorrow. Okay. Um, Investment accounts and all that have an extra 15 days. But the filing season did open yesterday. So if you're one of the 155 million people who need to file tax returns, you can start. (laughs) (laughs) Million. Wow. And so, and and like 1099s, like like. I'm self-employed, and mm-hmm. I have some people we paid, what is it, over 600 bucks? Right, exactly. Then you have to send them a 1099, and all those have to be mailed out by tomorrow, right? Right, exactly. Okay. The interest has got a $10 limitation. Uh, services provided has the $600 limitation. Okay. So uh, we, we, every, the reason you're on the show is we're going to talk about tax laws. You and I have had many conversations. Mm-hmm. On a whole, let's take it from the from the overview of it. Do you think that the tax law will benefit middle-income America more than what was currently in place? In a very general statement, I think the tax law will benefit most Coloradoans with their taxes. Okay, and one of the reasons is what? What, What's the core reason that it will help most people? I I think the lower tax rates will help. That's probably the biggest. And the the fact that the credits uh, for kids and dependent children have expanded have expanded, and more people will be able to qualify for those. Okay, let's talk then first about the lower tax limits. Prior, and, uh, and Trump talked about this, about how he cut brackets mm-hmm. down. In that, w- w- how much did he cut the brackets? I mean, where where's the biggest portion of that cut? The, the lower two brackets have gone down by 3% apiece from 15 to 12 and from 25 to, to 22 so your your tax liability kind of almost goes away at those that income level. It goes it will it will go down instead of being having those top dollars taxed at say a twenty five percent. Now you can have a majority of those dollars taxed at twenty two percent. Okay, and that affects anybody making anywhere from where fifty hundred thousand a year. Where? Yeah, on a on a joint return that covers you pretty much up to about one fifty five. So yeah, three percent is. Mm-hmm. You know, that's that's a quick little one. Sure. <laughs> pretty pretty. Now let's talk then about the standard deductions. Mm-hmm. Standard deductions before were twelve five. Right. But that's for joint. Mm-hmm. What's changed? So on a single is now twelve thousand flat, and the married filing joint is twenty four thousand. Now, um, so if you're if you start itemizing your deductions and you don't hit twenty four thousand on a joint return. Then you just use the twenty-four thousand standard deduction. The deductions that you would add up to see if you're over twenty-four would be medical, your taxes, which we've all heard has been taxed capped at ten thousand dollars for your income tax, your property tax, and your car tax. And then you, you still have your mortgage interest and your charitable donations. All of those cannot exceed twenty-four thousand. Well, no, if they do exceed twenty-four, then, then it you, benefits you to itemize rather right. than to. Well, that should be easy standard. to do with our health care monthly bill. Well, that, that was that, the question I was going to ask. The, the monthly bill counts my, towards the health care. Monthly bill. Well, uh, for example, my bill is eight hundred dollars a month. 
So that's so, included in your deductions. Right. Yeah. Right. Some people, if you're a business owners or self-employed, there's other places to take that medical deduction, but mostly out-of-pocket medical. Not a lot of people have been hitting because there's thresholds on that too. You can't exceed seven and a half percent or ten percent of your income. That's you. Can, you have to get over that amount before you even get a dollar of deduction. So the medical. For working people, it's pretty much that, zero. Yeah, it doesn't get hit very often. Because if you're making fifty thousand, you got to spend five thousand dollars before you can even start to add exactly. any of that to the. Am, am I correct? Exactly. Exactly. So medical isn't really that big a portion of it. So now you're dealing with charitable donations, right? And then the interest on your home, right? Which are it, some changes in that area for later. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll get into those in yeah. a bit, and then um, taxes, taxes on your home. Uh, income tax, property tax, and uh, there's an ownership tax on your car are the three big ones. That are all part of that 24000 Yeah, that, that, in that section itself, those three are capped at 10000 You could pay twelve, but for this calculation, only 10 of it counts. So even if you're paying more, you're stuck at the 10 Right, right. <laughs> if you have any questions uh, for Michael, we'll open up the phone lines. Again, this is a great time to get some free answers uh, from a qualified CPA. And, again, um, when we have people on like this, um, you know, we've either checked them out if we don't know them, but most of the time, Kurt, we know these people, and we're saying, hey, well, if you use him, that's a good enough testimonial right yeah. there. <laughs> yeah, he's he's pretty well kept me in line. You know, he, he'll tell me some things, and, I might not want to do them. He'll say, well, I told you to do this. Okay. Yep. <laughs> then I'll kind of do that. So 303-477-5600. So as self-employed people, we always look for all the deductions, you know, that we mm-hmm. can. Are there any that are sometimes commonly missed as you look at some of the, your clients and different things that, you know, are tax deductible that maybe some of us don't think about? They're not. If As self-employed and, you know, having the requirement to keep a separate business account and prefer you have a charge card or a debit card that's tied to that account it's pretty easy to track what is utilized for business purposes when you start expending the money the um, the things that don't get run through there exactly are some kind of the harder ones which require more documentation as well such as your auto usage and mileage um, because it's not really you don't write a check every month for sure your auto usage um, and then you have to weigh whether the office and the home um, deduction is worth um, going through the calculations and and if there's enough benefit there to put that on. Mm-hmm. Now the mileage and mileage logs. Mm-hmm. So if I drive from my house to Kurt's office, I have to log that as an appointment. Mm-hmm. Correct. Correct. What all are they looking for on that mileage log? Who I, do I have to write down the person I'm seeing? I mean, how specific do you have to be? It, <laughs> it, it's a tough call, but it, yeah, the, the better the log, the better the chance that it will uh, survive the auto process. Okay. If it comes to that. Client, the, well, the business I per- hate that. I mean, tell, cause well, I'm all you, over the place. Yeah, you're all you know? over the place. I mean, I may go to you, then all of a sudden decide to go somewhere, and then before I know it, you know, and I, and I drive 35,000 miles a year mm-hmm. around Denver. Right. Okay. I have OnStar in my truck. That keeps a computerized log. Of every mile I drive, and I got into an argument one year, which they won, but I got into an argument (laughs) one year because I'm saying, look, this show, this is a calculated thing from OnStar. This isn't something I made up, and here's 34,000 miles that I've drove. You can look at my last eight years of history. I've driven that every year of my life. Take off 20%, 30%, whatever, but no, I mean, they wanted, you know. Starting mileage, ending mileage, who you were seeing, what it was for. Business purpose. The client, yeah. But it's worth a lot of money if you drive that kind of it mileage. Is. It is. Yeah, for that kind of money. So yeah, you kind is. of get yes. paid for doing it. Yeah. But uh, I can never remember that because it makes me so mad to do it. <laughs> well, uh, a, lot, a lot of folks in my business now are going paperless, so it's actually cut my miles time in half. But there for a while I was driving, and I would just say, okay, customer's name, and I would put address calculate the miles and i would add them up but it's it's been reduced so much for me mm-hmm. it doesn't add up to as much as it used to and what is it a mile right not to put you on the spot but roughly <laughs> <laughs> last i was i think it was 54 cents a mile okay 
yeah. don't know if that's current or right. Well, that takes the gas price down to about a buck sure. sixty. Absolutely, I like that. <laughs> <laughs> You're listening to Haystack Help Radio on a special edition of Your Money Matters. Kurt Rogers in studio with us from Affordable Interest Mortgage. So if you got any mortgage questions, we'll take that as well. But also Michael Crouch and Michael's a CPA. So again. Our phone lines are open, 303-477-5600. Cassie's running our Facebook Live. If you've got a question, Cassie can get us that through Facebook Live as well. Just go to Haystack Help Radio on Facebook and catch us there. We'll be right back. What could you do with an extra $500, $1,000, or even $1,500 per month? How would that change things for you? Would you buy a new car, pay off bills, or just feel a bit more secure about your retirement? What if I told you there's a way to make your dreams a reality? I'm talking about trading and investing in the market. Now, before you say, oh, that's not for me, just hear me out. I want to invite you to a half-day trading course so you can check this out. I promise you, you'll go away smarter than when you came in. We here at Online Trading Academy sponsor this, and we'll even send you home with a free home study video guide. Your money's doing nothing for you in a CD or mutual fund. Learn how to profit when the market's up or down. Call us now while seats are still available at 303-325-2776. Use offer code RADIO50. 303-325-2776. That's 303-325-2776. Worried about losing the tax deduction of your mortgage interest? Now, more than ever, it's important to stop paying more interest than you should. Take AIM, Affordable Interest Mortgage. If you have a second mortgage, those rates are going to continue to go up and up and up. Let us show you how to take advantage of higher conforming loan limits of $529,000 at lower fixed rates. Credit card rates will also continue to go up. Pay off those high rate cards now and save thousands in interest. Take AIM, 720-895-0500. Call now to save over $100,000 in interest and own your home faster, all without changing one penny of your current spending habits. It's only your money. Take AIM. Paying mortgage insurance is like adding over 1% to your current rate. Stop paying it. Refinance or purchase your next home with only 3% down and no mortgage insurance. Call 720-895-0500. Let AIM save you thousands like we've been doing since 2001. 720-895-0500. That's 720-895-0500. Take AIM and take control of your money. NMLS 298191. Regulated by door. Equal credit lender. Lone Tree Veterinary Medical Center offers KLZ listeners complete pet care services every day, all at one location. It's so much more than a clinic and so convenient. Their expert staff is always happy to help your pet have the happy and healthy life it deserves. Schedule a medical checkup for your beloved companion or take the first step toward a better behaved buddy by signing your pup up for obedience training. Did you know that if your sweet kitty needs grooming, Lone Tree Veterinary Medical Center is one of the few facilities that offers grooming for both dogs and cats. And if you're planning a vacation, Lone Tree Veterinary Medical Center offers boarding for dogs, cats, and other small pets so you can take your vacation without worry, knowing that your four-legged family member's home away from home has a fully equipped medical center on site. Learn more about Lone Tree Veterinary Medical Center at LoneTreeVet.com or call 303-708-8050. Need a new pickup? Lynn Lyle Chevrolet is having a Silverado year-end clearance sale. With Silverado starting at just $26,900, Lynn Lyle Chevrolet always has the lowest prices. Lynn Lyle Chevrolet, I-225 in East Colfax or on the web at lynnlylechevy.com. Rush to Reason with John Rush. Weekdays from 3 to 7 on KLZ 560. Welcome back to Haystack Help Radio. My name is Scott Watley, along with Kurt Rogers from Affordable Interest Mortgage in Studio. Michael Crouch. Michael's a CPA. If you've got any questions, our phone lines are open, 303-477-5600. Okay. We were talking about uh, mandatory deductions being increased up to 24 for a couple. Did we lose any itemized deductions with those changes? Yeah, the one we lost was what we call the miscellaneous itemized deduction section. Um it would anything over two percent of your income you could start deduct your financial advisor fees your tax prep fees your uh, unreimbursed business expenses and that section is going to be completely gone off the return in 2018. so it's like a junk door it's just now gone yes <laughs> everything just kind of went to throw in yeah. okay i can't do it no more right and i think the one that's going to affect people is the people sales people or different people that have a lot of expenses that they pay that they don't get reimbursed from their employer oh yeah 
material effect on their returns. Oh, really? So, okay. yeah, yeah, that's what I mean. It's a junk drawer. Okay, mm -hmm. I throw this in here, I throw this in here. Can't charge in the financial planner. Sure. <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay, well, that's gone. Okay, let's talk about the things that fit into the standard deduction that they have to exceed the 24000 and you talked about charitable donations. Mm -hmm. um, that's going to hurt a lot of charities. Do you believe that will? It comes down to people's intent when they donate. If it was for the tax deduction, uh, that was, that's going to have an effect. Correct. And people that donate out of their own goodness of their heart and their philanthropist attitude, yes. they'll still donate. Yeah, the numbers that I'm seeing is that, that they think – Nationally, it'll cost three billion dollars in losses to all different types of charities. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, the church I go to, I've talked to some of the pastors about that. They're they're kind of keeping an eye open as to what that happens because a lot of people, like that, will get into an IRA for a tax reason. They'll give money to a church because they get to write it off. Mm -hmm. So there, uh, there's going to be a ripple effect to that, I believe. So if you have a like we do a lot of things with our Sportsman of Colorado show, like the Rocky Mountain Elk Foundation, they're a five hundred one c three. So Let's say I give 500 bucks to them at their banquet in March. Is that $500 deductible when you give it to a 501c3 like that? Yes, it's deductible. But what may happen is if you haven't exceeded that 24000 for your dedu you're going to get no tax value for it. I got gotcha. you. Okay. You're coming in at nineteen five, twenty thousand. 20000 Yeah. No, you're going to take the twenty four that the law allows. Yeah, when you're adding up those deductions plus your interest on your home, and the taxes that you talked about, if it equals ten thousand dollars hypothetically, if that doesn't exceed twenty four, then none of those deductions benefit you. Tax benefit wise. you for tax purposes. And all of you, and does that include church contributions, yes. like he's yeah. talking about yeah. as well? Okay. That that's and that was one of the parts of the tax bill that I didn't like. Right. So it's either going to take people that have been maybe giving five thousand a year and say, okay, I got nineteen thousand, I'm going to jack in another five so I get to count it all. Because now it becomes more itemized. They might throw in more. I don't know. Uh, but that was one of the things that I wasn't too fond of, that we've lost that deduction. And I do think there's a couple of strategies involved there. And I think um, one of them I call it the, kind of the grouping strategy. What you might, if you're somebody who's close, some years you're at 21 and some years you're at 28. So some years you can itemize and some you don't. You need to look and as part of your plan, think this is a year I'm going to exceed. I'm going to go ahead and donate to my church or to this sportsman show this year, even though it's December, because I'm going to exceed the number and I don't plan to next year. So okay. you might start grouping your expenses into a year. Yeah, planning it out. Mm -hmm. If I've had a good year, okay, I'm going to give more. Right. Plan? Plan? You mean i got to plan something? Those people plan. <laughs> we don't plan any of that stuff. I hate that word. Okay. Uh, so now we come down into interest on a home. And for, for years, everybody says, you buy a home, you now get the deduction. Well, you do, except for it has to be in excess of 24000 with a combination of all these other right. items. Correct. So a lot of customers are saying to me, say, well, um, if I do this loan, am I going to be able to write the deduction? That's something that they need to see their CPA on. But when you start looking at the interest paid on a home, if you're dealing in, let's say, a $250,000, $300,000 home, you're going to pay in approximately maybe a thousand to eleven hundred dollars a month in interest on a brand new loan. Well, that's going to equal about twelve grand. Mm -hmm. That interest is now gone as far as being able to deduct it because you've, they're actually giving you more by going to twenty four. It's not a negative; it's a positive, right? It because does. you got twenty four thousand where you're only really coming up with eighteen, right? So I'm not trying to make it sound like it's a bad thing. So when people are looking at that, some of the things they need to consider, right? Go ahead. Well, and I think that's where, as you start to see that, okay, now you're buying a house, and this year you might get close to that number, um, do you pay the property taxes early, which is what the the response was from a lot of uh, people that were planning in December was to pay that before right. the you could lose the benefit. It, it, I think it's going to be the same with your interest. Do you want to pay an extra month? Is this the year I'm going to itemize, and I want to get that 13th payment in? Yeah, you, you need taxes. to plan it better. Yes, that's that's where the the CPA or the plan. It may not be for the return preparation itself, but 
there's some planning that can be done. There's some donations that could be done directly from your IRA. There's things like that that you can have the conversations about and plan and lower your taxes long before you start getting into the actual preparation of the return. Right. Instead of waiting to December 15th. Sure. i got to crush all this stuff yeah. in. Now, or, or February 1st. Yeah. <laughs> some of the stuff with the homes, Kurt, and the way I understood it with some of our financial planners is if you already have your home and you're not buying a new and all that, you can keep deducting like the uh, second mortgage and all that. Is that true? On an I'm, existing I'm, home? I'm chuckling because I've had this conversation with Michael. Okay. I'll let Michael answer that one. The, the home equity portion of the loan is no longer going to be a write-off whether it was done before December 15th or after. Done. The home equity is gone, starting in 2018, not this year that you're filing in the next couple months. Now, the if the loan was originated before December 15th, 2017, and the loan is a million dollars or less, then you can still write off the interest in full. Okay, that's what I was getting to there. Mm -hmm. So yes. less than a million dollars, done before the December 15th? Correct. 2015, I mean? 17, 2017. 2017. Mm -hmm. Then you can still deduct that. Right. Correct. Okay. The change on that would be if it's after December 16th, the cap is now 750000 yeah. Not Stop from a million. million to 750. Mm -hmm. Okay. And to be honest, that's appropriate. That's, that's not a big it? deal. Yeah. Well, can be in Colorado because the price of homes are going up. We're soon going to be there. Sure. Yeah. But now we're going to talk about home equity lines credit, which is a big thing. A home equity line of credit versus a home loan. One of the things people will say, well, I have a second mortgage. I don't have a HELOC. One of the things that makes a difference is a home loan is a second mortgage that's fixed. A home equity line of credit or HELOC is a second mortgage that's adjustable. That's the part that you get no deduction on that. Even if you exceed 24 with everything else, you still get no deduction for that, correct? Yeah. I think we're going to, over the next 11 months, we're going to start figuring out what, the definition of the home, what's home equity right. indebtedness versus what's a second loan. And, and because it, that's the thing we're unsure of, is it just the first and then case closed? And then how can you distinguish? And where did the, where did the, where, did, where was the money used? Where were the proceeds from the loan used? Was it used to buy the home? Was it used to improve the home? Or was it used to pay off credit cards and all that, which is going to have an effect on what you can deduct? Which is where I was headed with this conversation. A lot of people don't understand. I want you to explain it to them. When you take money out on your house, even if you exceed the 24, you may not legally be able to write off some of that interest because you're not spending it to improve the home. Correct. You're taking a vacation. Explain that to them. Well, the, the hard part we're going to have to start doing is probably tracing where the proceeds go from new loans. If it went really? to if it went to buy a home, and the home is less than seven hundred fifty thousand, then we don't have much issue. If you pulled the money out, bought a second home, paid off credit cards, improved the home, we're going to have to start tracing where those proceeds went and what percent of this loan is going to be deductible versus non deductible. Yeah, because if, if you go if you take money out, let's say you pull out fifty thousand and you go buy a car, that didn't improve your home. That's not a deduction. I don't care if you're above twenty four. But if you spent the fifty thousand to improve the home, now it goes into a different bucket. And that's again coming back to a CPA needs to explain that to you before you make those decisions. Why you may try to get away with it. Michael brought up a point. When you're deducting interest, nowhere on the tax forms does it say this was a home equity line of credit or fixed. It just talks about interest in a big bucket. Well, that's all probably going to get fine-tuned, like you said, in the next 11 months. And it's interesting. For the last two years, the mortgage statements, the tax form actually had the origination date of the loan on them. And we always thought that was kind of a un unnecessary item. And then here the law passes that makes that a very appropriate discussion point. Yeah. Hmm. What about reverse mortgages? Will this have any effect on tax stuff with the reverse mortgages and what because they do with the Because it's all going back to the home because it, it, it's not a forward mortgage. It's a reverse. So it's increasing it to the payoff. So, yeah, it doesn't affect those at all. Right. It does affect second homes. Second homes, you cannot write off the interest on a second home, period. Well, wow. it, the second home, the first and second home come under the same $750,000 cap or a million-dollar cap if they're – so if one loan is – 
500,000 and one 300, and they were both acquired in 2018, you will have to start prorating because now you're over the 750. But the second home, if the loan is tied to the second home, you can still write off some of the interest. Now, if you go out and borrow against your first home and buy a second home, now you've, now you've got to start tracing where the proceeds went and do an election and th this kind of stuff to say this is for my second home because now you have a first and a second on your primary. Gonna... Now you know why Michael's here. Yeah. 303-477-5600 uh, is our number. If you've got questions, I'm telling you, I don't, I don't like them right. looking into our money <laughs> <laughs> at all. Yeah. Uh, you're listening to Haystack Help Radio, special edition of Your Money Matters. we got to take a short break, and we'll be back with more right after this. Littleton Heating and Air Conditioning is proud of their 45 years of HVAC service to Littleton, Highlands Ranch, and Denver metro area. Littleton Heating and Air Conditioning is your Lennox and Carrier expert heating and air conditioning contractor. They are proud to offer the finest heating, air conditioning, and indoor air quality products with prompt and professional customer service and satisfaction. Call today and mention Haystack Help Radio and save $25 off any repairs or $100 off your furnace installation. Call 303-798-3880. That's 3 303-798-3880 for your appointment today. Littleton Heating and Air, A-plus members of the Better Business Bureau and official Haystack Help registered company. I was in a car accident and I was hurt. Bad. My life was instantly turned upside down. I can't work. My insurance company is not treating me like family, like the commercial said they would. My car was totaled. I had some savings, but all of that is gone now. And on top of all of this, the person who hit me didn't have insurance at all. I don't know what to do. After you've been in an accident, call Kevin Flesh of Flesh Law. He will answer all of your questions. Kevin Flesh will help you to determine if you're entitled to compensation for your pain and suffering. And he has the experience and the knowledge to navigate the complicated maze created by the insurance companies designed to minimize your claim. Call Kevin Flesh of Flesh Law at 303 806 8886 to find out how he can help you get the compensation that you deserve. That's Kevin Flesh, 303 806 8886. Call now to get your life turned back around. Ladies, I know you're tired of walking into the local gun store and seeing the same old thing. So let me tell you about Rampart Firearms. Just a quarter mile up Highway 67 off of Santa Fe and Sedalia, you will find a great selection of guns, ammo, tactical, and personal defense weapons. And if you or your spouse love to hunt, Rampart Firearms is a great stop for all of your hunting needs. Shotguns, rifles, pistols, anything from predator hunting to your next big game trip. Head to Rampart Firearms at the foot of the Rockies. Open six days a week, Monday through Saturday, 10 a.m. to 7 p.m. And you will only pay a 4% tax on your purchase. RampartFirearms.com, 720-468-0050. That's 720-468-0050. Don't fall for gimmick ads when choosing your insurance coverage. Group Insurance Analyst has been Colorado's insurance superstore since 1984, where customers can compare and shop for all of their insurance needs. At GIA Insurance, their brokers have no allegiance to any particular health, auto, or home insurance company. Take advantage of their experience, expertise, and exceptional client service. For your free quote, call today at 303-423-0162. That's 303-423-0162. Visit their website, e-gia.com, or stop by their office at 44th and Garrison Street in Wheat Ridge. Group Insurance Analyst is an official Haystack Help registered company. Got a question for the station? Email info at CrawfordBroadcasting.com. Now back to Haystack Help Radio. And we are back. You're listening to Haystack Help Radio, special edition of Your Money Matters, brought to you by Affordable Interest Mortgage. Once again, your one-stop shop for all your mortgage needs. Give Kurt and his crew a call over there if you've got any questions about mortgages, 720-895-0500, AIMortgage.net. Today, our guest, Michael Crouch. Michael's a CPA, and we've been going over this uh, new tax deal and all the different things there. And, and, Michael, you brought up a good point during the break here. I mean, Wow. 
you guys have had a very short window of time to look at this. And we don't have to worry about it right now for you filing everybody's taxes and all that. But, I mean, how would they expect you guys to be able to really, you know, answer questions and do all this in just a short time? Wow. Yeah, it came up quick. And you, you read and you try and understand the best you can. And But I was talking to people in my office, and I said it was funny. When the 86 law passed, I didn't come in to start doing taxes until about 91, 92. So people could tell me what had changed and how we were going to go forward. And now we've all kind of had this for about 30 days and trying to figure out what we can do to help people plan and to get ready for next year. Because one thing I do think that's going to happen is people are thinking that the taxes are going down. And like I said, generally, I think most people's taxes will go down. But what you may see is not a big change to your return next year because you'll see your paycheck slowly increase maybe over the next couple uh, paychecks as they've re reformed the tables, and we saw this with some of the stimulus packages a few years ago, Right, is, okay, now you mysteriously have an extra $70 in your check, and at the end of the year, your taxes fell $1,000, but you've had 900 of it already kind of given to you through your checks, and there really isn't much material change to your return. So you, you may not be getting the big windfall you think when you actually go to file the return. You, I can tell you that your taxes have gone down. Mm-hmm. But the other side of the equation is what you've paid in has gone down also. So um, just want to caution people not to go out and think the money's coming a year from now. That Right. Kurt's going to get into some um, issues with homes here in just a second. But one other question I had real quick was we saw a lot, uh, several companies, and I think Southwest Airlines came out later uh, last week, said they were giving big bonuses to employees. Mm -hmm. what, what, what has been good for the companies so that they are doing these bonuses? Well, the company's got a... A new tax rate that was kind of lower than it was before, and kind of a flat yeah, it went, amount. Yeah, it went from thirty-five to yes, twenty-eight or something. Yeah, it was a graduated scale, but some of them were could hit the thirty-five percent bracket. Now it's just a twenty-one, and so okay, they, yeah, that benefited a lot of people. Businesses coming back to the standard deduction. A, a, a lot of people when they we talk to me about the interest on the home that they they feel they're losing that, but when you put that number together, that twenty-four thousand actually is a benefit to them. Right. What now becomes more important is you really need to be pay, paying attention to the interest you're paying on your loan. Now, with rates going up, that means you're going to pay more, but there's still ways to cut that. Um, a, a lot of folks, I mean, the asset manager is a perfect example. Even mm -hmm. though it's a home equity line of credit, you can pay 40% less interest on your home faster with the same money. So you're not only getting the 24000 you're saving 40% of the interest. But if that doesn't work with you, maybe take a shorter term. Because about you may take a 27-year versus a 30, you're going to save maybe 75 be, or pay 75 to $80 more a month. You're saving tens of thousands of dollars in interest that you can't write off anyhow. So why pay it? Right. So, again, coming back to the CPA and why you should talk, how do I put all of this together to make it fit is something that's really important. Because the 24 is a good benefit, but how do you go about not paying interest on the other side of it? Right. And that was something we've seen over the last 10 years. Um, people were getting the same refunds for a while, and then all of a sudden their refund went down or went away. And they're like, Mike, what happened? It's like, well, you refinanced and you paid a lot less interest. And that's a good thing. Yes. And this is the same type of thing. If you can't hit the 24 a thousand on a, on a married return, and they're going to give it to you, then you take it. But take, you still, yeah, take it. Yeah, you still sure. pay as little of interest as you can. Right. Now, talk. Oh, Let's go to the call. phones real quick. We've got Wally on the line. Wally, you're on Haystack Help Radio. How are you, sir? Good. How are you guys? Good, man. So I got a comment and then a couple of questions. All right. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to comment on the standard deduction and the interest. So let's say that you spend $15,000 a year in mortgage interest. What I was taught because I, I uh, am a Dave Ramsey fan, would you rather have that $15,000 in your bank because you've paid off your loan, or would you rather give the government, or, I mean, pay $15,000 in interest in order to save $5,000 on your income taxes? Because even though you're paying $15,000 in interest, you only get to actually, you only, it only affects uh, in, in real ratios about a third of your tax rate or your tax bill. Am I correct on that? Yes. Yeah, the, there's so, not a there's not a deduction out there that is worth more 
on your tax return that it is in your pocket. <laughs> so right, but mm-hmm. but we've been we've been led to believe that you got to have a mortgage to deduct the yep. in, you need that interest deduction, and now with the twenty four thousand dollars standard deduction, to me that would be more of an incentive to get your house paid off and not be paying any interest to anybody because you're still getting the twenty four thousand dollar deduction. Yes, yeah, that's correct. If you're if you're married and filing joint, mm-hmm. so correct. now that the comments out of the way. Um, under Obamacare, you could have a Christian MediShare type medical program that qualified you so that you didn't get hit with the penalty, but you could not deduct the cost of the Christian MediShare insurance. Did that change now that the mandate is gone? If I have Christian MediShare, will that expense be deductible now? No, my understanding is that's that is not an interest. That's, that's not an insurance payment. That is a community pay into the community, and there's not a, a deduction for that. And the mandate isn't gone for 2018. It's got one more year. Oh, well, but but Trump effectively said don't enforce it, didn't he, last year? That was 17, but there, uh, on your 17 returns, you have to disclose your uh, health insurance and how you complied with the mandate. But MediShare does fulfill that requirement of Obama share because I personally have it yes and I've been confirmed it does conf- it does meet that requirement for having insurance even though it's not an insurance it's not a it grandfathered in from okay. years ago yes since you have it have you ever had to use it uh, actually no I'm actually going in in uh, um, February for the first time to use oh, it okay because we we were with Kaiser and I'm switching over because Kaiser was going to be like eighteen hundred dollars a month this year and yeah, i know it's, it's like that's that's almost as much as my mortgage so um that's why we and then that's the, why they the, reduce the, the, the interest on mortgages so you can buy more health insurance yeah. <laughs> now can can you can i still do can you do a health savings account or anything like that if i'm doing christian medishare i don't so you get some deductibility that i'm not 100 percent sure on most insurances say that they're hsa eligible there are certain re- requirements to have an HSA, uh, zero co-pays, and, and different things like that. I I, I actually don't know if MediShare qualifies Well, if you'll listen Thursday, I'll be doing a show with Paul Inagro over at Group Insurance Analyst. Okay. I'll make a note, and we'll, we'll try to bring that up. And we've talked By about the way, that that's who I have all of my insurance with. <laughs> yeah, they're they're awesome. Group Insurance Analysts yeah, are brokers. Yana is, is yeah. uh, absolutely phenomenal over there. Uh, and then I'll make a comment. This would affect you greatly, Scott, since you – I, I, I don't drive quite as many miles as you do, but I have never understood why that they give the same 54 cents for a guy that's driving a Prius versus a guy that's driving um, a Silverado. Yep, I agree. Why, why don't they have different weight classifications of vehicles and the mileage deduction, if you're doing mileage and not actual expenses, be more based because you know that you're consuming more gas in a Silverado than you are a Prius. Sure. But that that they, just but makes they my get job the same harder. Deduction rate. <laughs> <laughs> Mike, that? Mike said that makes it, that would make his job yeah. harder, but it would sure help me, that's for sure. <laughs> uh. So I, I mean I'd I'd love to have like an eighty cent per mile deduction for my truck for work. But, yeah, no kidding. Uh, it, Real quick, Wally, know. give us Maybe. a I'm gonna give you sixty second commercial. Tell us about your roofing company. Uh, Thunderstorm Roofing. I've been doing roofing in Denver since 1991. Um, I'm a very small company. As your wife uh, that helped me with my uh, website said, she would call me a boutique roofer. I'm more <laughs> into wanting to do the quality jobs than, the, than a lot of quantity. And uh, just to give you a quick, for instance, with a couple of insurance things this year, um, I had one insurance claim that started at nineteen thousand dollars, and when it was all said and done, we were at fifty-six thousand dollars. So, if you have been turned down, I'm getting ready to help a gentleman that's right in the middle of the hail area. He got turned down by State Farm, and he has very obvious hail damage. And I don't think there will be any doubt that we'll get that paid. But if you've got a claim where you don't think that they're covering things, it's just a matter of coming in and looking at everything, doing supplement requests, and uh, getting them to pay you for it. So Absolutely. And uh, my number is 
541-0705, or you can go to Victoria's website that she designed for me <laughs> at thunderstormroofing.net. And if anybody needs a website, call Victoria. She does a great job. <laughs> well, I appreciate that, Wally. Thanks for listening, and be sure and listen on Thursday, and I'll get with Paul and Igro, and we'll figure this insurance deduction out too. Okay. That's the big thing that's affected me is the health insurance. Sure. So. Okay, bud. Okay. Have You're, a good one. You too, man. You're listening to Haystack Help Radio and a special edition of Your Money Matters. we got to take a break. Be right back. If you're looking for great deals on outdoor equipment and clothing, we've got you covered. Hi, this is Bill Paddock, owner of the Outdoorsman's Attic, your outdoor gear consignment headquarters. You'll save 20, 30, 40, even 50% on previously owned outdoor gear for the fisherman, hunter, and camper. We also sell live bait, firearms, and ammo. If you're doing a little spring cleaning, bring in your gear to the Outdoorsman's Attic. We'll sell it for you and put cash in your pocket. You can also pick up your hunting and fishing licenses right here at the store. Your one-stop shop for all your outdoor gear needs is the Outdoorsman's Attic, located at 2650 West Hampton Avenue in Sheridan, Colorado. 303-781-3626. That's 303-781-3626. Or visit us online at outdoorsmansattic.com. Mention Sportsman's of Colorado and receive 20% off all your outdoor clothing. Hi, this is Scott Watley. Let me tell you what I love about Stack Optical. They are truly one of the last optician-owned, family-owned optical stores. At Stack Optical, you can be confident you'll receive personal attention. For over 50 years, Alan Stack has shown he really cares about making his customers happy. Stack Optical also has a beautiful new location at 2233 South Monaco Parkway in Denver. Free and easy, up-close parking. Stack Optical has an on-site eyeglass production lab. Whether you need office eyewear or a new set of shooting or golf glasses, Stack Optical has the solution with the Stack Sport Pack. Give them a call today and ask for their $69 eye exam, 303-321-1578. That's 303-321-1578. Your eyes and vision are one of the most important things in life. I'm confident at Stack Optical you'll see the difference. That's 303-321-1578, stackoptical.com. Lynn Lyle Chevrolet is having its year-end clearance sale on all new 2017 Chevrolets. Other Chevy dealers are offering 20% off. We're going to top that. We're offering 30% off on new Chevrolets. Lynn Lyle Chevrolet, I-225 in East Colfax, or on the web at lynnlylechevy.com. Rush to Reason with John Rush. Weekdays from 3 to 7 on KLZ 560. Welcome back to Haystack Help Radio. Mr. Kurt Rogers is with us from Affordable Interest Mortgage. Once again, their number is 720-895-0500. Mike Crouch is also in studio. Mike's CPA. And, um, Mike, I tell you, this this is going to be a mess for a lot of people. I would highly recommend people find a good qualified CPA, Kurt. If they, if they, have a especially if they just own a business, whatever, just to make sure that, you know, one, you're following the, the laws because everybody yep. wants to do that. But um, I'm telling you, I, I think it's just going to be a mess. With the, with the changes, you have to understand where they are so you can figure out, like Michael says, where do I put my money to get the biggest bang for that? How do I change things to make it work for me? Mm -hmm. So I agree with you. We need a CPA. Mm -hmm. One of the questions I, I didn't get to earlier was about investments, the interest on investment and the depreciation and all of that. Has that or is there any change to that with the new tax laws? It, so when I think investment property, I think um, active rental unit, whether right. it's commercial or – yeah, that is on a different schedule. So that is not subject schedule to e. the Schedule E as opposed to the itemized deductions we've been talking about. It's all on Schedule A. So there, there hasn't really been any change in that area. There, there are some benefits, which we probably won't go into, but if you're, if you're an owner of a pass-through entity like an S-corporation or LLC – you own a rental property, you have a farm. There's the whole business side of this tax law that passed that's going to affect those people, and those people will definitely need some professional help, right. I think. Because, but they probably already have it. Right, and and there's there's going to be some, some good deductions, but there's some, some things that are going to have to be looked at. Real quick, a business question, then we've got a few minutes left here. We'll get into some things. How would you uh, advise people whether to do an LLC or like an S-Corp? How do you go about differentiating what's best? It depends on what the business is going to do. Um, I'd like to work with service businesses, and those the S Corp is a, probably the best fit. They're employees of their own company, and um, the 
S Corporation doesn't pay any tax. The tax flows through to the owner's return. Um, now, if it if you rent if you have rental property, then that's a different animal, and that would be better in uh, LLC, whether it's a partnership or solely owned. Still passes through to you personally, but rental property doesn't really have a, a benefit being inside of a corporate structure. Okay, and then I heard that it does cut down on audits too. You're like you're less likely to be audited if it's an S corp rather than LLC. True or false? That's true. Statistics would bear that out. Okay, yes. good deal. All right, let's talk real quick about. Um, are there any changes to the primary residence? No, luckily that there was a change on there that I wasn't that I was extremely worried about for clients that were going to move in 2018 that the rules were going to change, but without going into them, they did not. Okay. The final version, uh, it's still if you live in that home, two out of the last five years, 24 out of the last 60 months, as your primary residence, you live in it and own it. The capital gain exclusion is still 250,000 per person. So if you and your wife both own it, it's a five hundred thousand dollar exclusion before you start hitting taxes. Now, I brought we brought up a customer that I have that's been in their home for about eighteen months, and they're thinking about selling it, and they're worried about capital gains. Something you clarified to me is the capital gains is from the price they pay for it, plus any expenses to the home could right. be the closing cost on the new one that they're buying, or when they're selling it, or any improvements that they've done to the house. Yeah, not the new one that they're buying, but the one that when they sell it, yes. know, the commissions and all those other closing costs. And you want to look back at to when you bought the house, you have title insurance and different fees like that that you can add to what we call your basis to increase that purchase price and lower the gain. Yeah, so, yeah, because under two years, you do have the capital gains issue, but you get to deduct these things away from that. So you might only have a five or $10,000 right. gain, which isn't that sufficient. Right. It, we're... The Colorado economy is what it is, that you could have a gain even though you pay a, some closing costs on both ends. That wasn't the case a few years ago, but now we're... It's you, definitely there. It's there. <laughs> so if you've done any improvements, you get to write them off right. also. Right. And I do think that's something people will want to keep track of going forward because you see that when they start looking at an area, it, it's not that hard for them to change the rules to that area. And if you put on a deck or a fence or you repaint the house, you do some things, I think we're back to where I'm going to recommend to my clients, go ahead and keep those receipts in a file. You you may never need them. Maybe the 500000 stays in place on a joint return. But I do think a time is coming where there's going to be more scrutiny in that area and maybe the numbers drop. So you're going to want to keep track of the stuff you did over the life of owning this house. Gotcha. Now, Again, from a, a tax standpoint and all the taxes and all that with retirement planning, we do some shows with some a couple of retirement specialists. But um, there's a lot to just keeping good records in there for mm -hmm. just tax benefits and all that. I mean, how long should we keep our tax returns? My general rule is it never hurts to keep the tax returns themselves forever if, if it's convenient. The records that go and make up the tax returns, you have to keep seven years from the time you filed them. So basically the eighth year. Mm -hmm. Now, anything with retirement income that, you know, from people, anything with this new tax deal that's going to affect them much? Nothing that changed. I, I think, you know, if you're retired and your house happens to be paid off, I think you might be some of the people that benefit from having the higher standard deduction. Gotcha. That you, well, that would make sense. Yeah. Oh, yeah, there's no interest you're paying. <laughs> yeah. now, the, one thing I would say, if you're of age where they're requiring you to take minimum required distributions on your IRA, which is age 70 and a half, there's inside your IRA, you can do, if they come to you and say, you have to take $20,000 this year based on the formula, and you're somebody that likes to donate to your church or different organizations, you can have the IRA make the donation for you and lower what you have to take. I'm assuming you're somebody that isn't going to use the standard or is going to use the standard. So you're going to get no value. You pull twenty thousand dollars out and donate two, you're paying tax on twenty. You can have the IRA make the donation for you, and now you only have to pull out eighteen and pay tax on eighteen. And so I think that's going to be the one well, of the big nice, benefits. That, that works pretty well. Yeah. I like that one. That's been in place for for a while. It's been permanent now. I think this is maybe the third year. But before you pull out twenty, donate two, you're still paying tax on eighteen because you used to don't you'd write off the two. I don't think you're going to have the ability to do that right. if you use the standard deduction. So, 
That's a benefit. So if you were in charge of all this tax stuff, <laughs> Trump calls you and says, Mike, what do we do to make all this tax stuff simple? What would you do? That's a good question. I don't know because I do think there's a lot of things in here that make it simple. Mm -hmm. You know, the standard, you know, a lot of people are just going to have their, their wages and use the standard deduction and it's going to be easier for them to file, isn't right. it? Right. Yes. And then on the other side, you've got things that have gotten much more complicated, but for the most part, they benefit us as taxpayers. So I'm not going to complain too loudly. Right. But, but as far as how to simplify, I've thought about that. And, mm -hmm. you know, does this flat tax work? Does a consumption tax work? And I can't make anything I, – I, they have a hard job. I can't make anything make a lot of sense to me because if, if you go to a consumption tax, okay, we're just going to pay tax on what we buy. Well, I have to buy school books, and I have to buy medical insurance, and I have to buy things when I go to the hospital. Is that now subject to tax, and how much is that going to add to that bill? And so let's go look back and look at the income tax. But I don't, sure. I don't think there's any easy answers out there. Well, great information. Told you. Everybody needs a CPA. I know that <laughs> after this conversation. Yeah, for you sure. need to at least sit down and, and have a conversation with them so you understand where you're going forward, how to how to maximize your cash. Yep. And so you're not losing it or paying it too much tax. Well, Michael, thank you very much, my friend. Great to have you in studio today. Nice to Kurt, thank you, sir. Not, not, not an issue. I'm glad you were here, Michael. Cassie, thank you for running our Facebook Live as well. Check that out on Haystack Help Radio on Facebook. If you missed uh, some of the show today, you can catch us there. Hope everyone has a great day. Again, check out our website, haystackhelp.com, and our helpline is always open, 303-333-HELP, 303-333-4357. Have a great day and leave it right here on KLZ 560. Views and opinions expressed on KLZ 560 are those of the speaker and do not necessarily reflect those of Crawford Broadcasting, the station, management, employees, associates, or advertisers. KLZ 560 is a Crawford Broadcasting God and Country station.